During the making of this video, the operators of various mines allowed the staging of certain conditions, which may at first appear to be unsafe and or not according to certain federal, state, and or company safety procedures. These scenes were created strictly to demonstrate the difference between correct and incorrect safety and work procedures in the mining environment. They were immediately corrected after being recorded for this training video production. They in no way are a true reflection of the conditions or operations of the mines shown in this video production. Welcome to another in our exciting series of mine safety training videos. Today we're going to be discussing with you an introduction to the mining environment. America has many natural resources. Some are agricultural in nature. Some resources are natural wonders enjoyed by tourists and locals alike. Still other resources have to be extracted by mining. The mining industry is a very important component of the economic health of Florida, contributing between one and a half and two billion dollars in a given year. In addition, approximately 20,000 workers owe their employment to the mining industry, either directly or indirectly. Some of the precious resources found in Florida include phosphate, masonry cement, crushed stone, sand and gravel, and huge oil reserves off the coast. There are other minerals mined as well, but these are the dominant resources. Let's take a closer look at some of these natural resources and how they're mined. Phosphate has been mined in Florida since 1883. At that time, mining was accomplished with picks and shovels and wheelbarrows. Next came mule-drawn scrapers, which gave way to steam shovels, and finally drag lines began being utilized in the 1920s and 30s with the advent of electrical and diesel power. The drag line significantly changed the mining of phosphate. In 1900, it took three to four years to mine 15 acres with picks and shovels. In the early days of small drag lines, about five acres were mined in a year. Today's drag lines are able to mine 15 acres in a month. Florida now supplies 25% of the world's phosphate and 75% of the nation's. Let's take a look at the mining process for phosphate. It all begins with the removal of overburden. Florida's typical phosphate ore, or matrix, is found 15 to 20 feet below the Earth's surface and is about 10 to 20 feet thick. Drag lines strip off the top layers of Earth, known as overburden, to get to the matrix, which is then processed to separate the phosphate from the sand and clay. While working around where drag lines are being used, it is essential to be aware of the swing radius of the machine. When speaking of the swing radius, this not only includes the space immediately around the machine, but also that encompassed by the extreme area of the boom that is transporting material that could fall and endanger personnel. In addition, a person must be aware of the hazards that exist in the dump area of the drag line. Dumped material can slide a great distance from the top of the pile to where it finally comes to rest. Drag lines can be powered by electricity. Due to the high voltage necessary to power this equipment, electrical hazards are present. Great care must be taken not to allow equipment damage to the power cable. Ground personnel should use hooks or other mechanical means when handling electrical cables. In addition, work should only be performed on electrical components within the drag line after power has been de-energized and properly locked and tagged. As the drag line retreats, a comprehensive plan should be in place to locate excess cable so that it is not endangered by the walking drag line. Drag lines have the ability to dig great depths, thus disturbing the ground condition in a large area. It is important to check for unstable ground on a regular basis in areas where drag lines operate and to stay away from the edges of excavated areas. 
Many of these excavated areas can fill with water, also posing a risk of drowning. Remember that federal standards mandate that life jackets or belts be used whenever there is a danger of falling into water. Be aware of other equipment that may be working in the area where drag lines are operating. The mine sites are usually miles from the plant that will process the rock. The rock is typically dumped in a pit at the mine site and high pressure water guns turn it into a slurry that can be pumped to the beneficiation plant where the phosphate will be separated from the sand and clay. All applicable PPE should be worn while in these areas with particular emphasis on eye protection. With any slurry, there will be the danger of slip and fall accidents. Be sure of your footing and be certain to wear the proper safety shoes ensuring proper traction. Although it may be tempting to walk on pipelines to get out of muddy or wet conditions, they are very slippery and injuries have occurred as a result. Do not walk on pipelines. Once the slurry reaches its destination, the flotation process begins. The flotation process uses a turbulent water system, chemicals, and air bubbles to float the phosphate particles to the top of the water, where they are skimmed off. This process allows for a high yield of phosphate with very little waste. Anytime chemicals are used in the mining process, precautions must be taken. Under federal HASCOM standards, all chemicals used or produced on mine property must be identified and that identity made available to all workers, visitors, and contractors. These chemicals, along with special precautions and special PPE requirements, are readily available from the MSDSs and the company's safety policies. Always adhere to signs and information provided by the operator while in these areas. Let's take a look at limestone. Florida is the number one producer of masonry cement in the United States and ranks in the top five in production and consumption of Portland cement. Of course, the main ingredient for cement is high-grade limestone. Florida is rich in deposits of high-grade limestone, which can undergo calcination or heating to produce cement. Many cement plants are located within close proximity to the mining operation. We are going to cover mining of limestone in more detail later. But for now, be certain to adhere to all traffic signs and always be aware of truck traffic that is supplying the plant. Let's look at some of the hazards associated with the cement production process. One of the greatest hazards associated with producing cement is the intense heat that is produced to manufacture a quality product. If you are unfamiliar with a kiln and the manufacturing process, you should never go into restricted areas which will be conspicuously marked for your safety. The shell temperature of the kiln will average around 700 degrees. At the preheat tower, temperatures rise around 1500 degrees. At the end of the process, when temperatures have reached their highest, they will range between 2700 degrees and 3000 degrees. Under normal circumstances, when the process is working properly, workers will not be in any of these areas but control ventilation and air currents from remote areas. In areas where it is necessary to perform work, workers will be equipped with special PPE and also work on a rotating basis. Periodically, residue will build up on the sides of the kiln and must be removed. Only highly skilled workers should ever attempt this process. Many accidents, some fatal, have occurred around cement plants from falling. Anytime workers must work in elevated areas, fall protection must be worn. Handrails and tow boards should be kept in place along walkways to ensure safe access. Fall hazards are also present when using man lifts. Man lifts are utilized frequently around the cement plants for maintenance and cleaning purposes. Always tie off while inside a man lift bucket in case of a hydraulic failure or if the bucket tips or if you overreach. Follow all manufacturer's recommendations while using the man lift. There are many electrical installations at a cement plant. Before any work is undertaken, power switches must be locked and tagged out according to policy. There are varying lockout tagout policies, but most will consist of at least the following. The circuit must be properly identified. The circuit must be de-energized by turning your face away and pulling down on the circuit breaker. The tag must be filled out with the required information. The lock and tag must be placed on the circuit breaker. The equipment should be tried to ensure that it will not start. 
Electrical installations are not the only systems that require lockout tagout. Any system that can release uncontrolled energy should be locked out and tagged before beginning work. This may include blanking hydraulic or pneumatic lines, as well as steam or water lines. Energy must be controlled. Absolutely no shortcuts. Florida ranks second nationally in the production of crushed stone. Most of the stone that is mined in Florida is used for road construction. Once overburden has been removed and the stone deposit has been exposed, the next step is to separate the stone from the existing deposit. This is accomplished by drilling and shooting. Only those involved with the blasting process should be in the blast area while it is being prepared. Special precautions will be taken during blasting to ensure the safety of all personnel on the mine site. A warning is sounded prior to the actual blast advising personnel to gather at a predetermined location. In addition, all access to the area is blocked, ensuring that no one can wander into the blast area. Once the blast has occurred, a post-blast inspection must take place before the area is cleared for work to resume. Now that the stone is free, it can be loaded and transported to the plant for crushing and screening. The material is usually extracted by the use of drag lines or by front end loaders. If drag lines are used, the material will be stacked into piles and loaders will then load the material into large trucks for transportation to the plant. If loaders are used to extract the material, it will be loaded directly into haul trucks for transportation. It is essential to follow all traffic controls while working or traveling in areas where this equipment is operating. Many accidents have occurred around mobile equipment because of the limited sight distance of the operator. Be certain to communicate your presence to the equipment operators while in their work area. Additional hazards that may be present while transporting materials include poor road conditions. One condition that should be addressed is the steepness of the grade on the roadway coming from the pit area. Roadways should be designed to eliminate steepness of grades as much as possible. Although there are no exact federal standards, most mining operations like to keep grades at 8% if at all possible. Roadways should also be maintained free from potholes, ruts, and other obstructions that could affect safety. Berms must be in place and maintained to at least mid-axle height of the largest piece of equipment traveling the roadway. Finally, if you must travel in areas close to high walls, be certain to check for loose, unconsolidated material that could fall. Upon arrival at the primary crusher, be certain that bumper blocks or other means are in place before backing to the dump area. Once the stone is dumped and begins the crushing and screening process, the materials will be carried throughout the plant on a conveyor system. These conveyor systems have multiple moving machine parts and pinch point areas that must be avoided. The number one defense for protection in these areas is guarding. Never remove a guard while the conveyor is running. Do not attempt maintenance or adjustments if the conveyor is in motion. Repairs and adjustments can only be made when the conveyor has been locked and tagged. Many of these conveyor systems are elevated and pose fall hazards. Be certain that all handrails and walkways are in good repair and if necessary, wear fall protection if circumstances warrant. Another hazard that a worker may be exposed to while at a crushed stone operation is falling material from a stockpile. Since loaders are constantly loading customer trucks from stockpiles, the angle of repose is continuously changing, creating steep angles on the face of the pile. If a worker or a truck driver ventures into these areas, they may be engulfed by falling material. If you must work or pass through areas where customer trucks are congested, take extra precautions. As stated previously, adhere to all traffic controls and drive defensively, looking out for the other driver. Florida ranks approximately 15th in the country in sand and gravel used and produced. Much of the sand produced in Florida is used in the construction industry. There are various methods that can be utilized to extract sand. Dredging utilizes high pressure suction lines to pump the sand from the dredging site to the screening plant. Anytime that you work around water, certain hazards exist. Of course, there's the danger of falling into water. 
Many people have drowned while working around dredges because they fail to wear their life vest or belts. The potential for slipping and falling accidents will also increase when water is present. It is very important to wear the proper safety shoes and ensure that the walking surfaces on dredges are skid proof. From time to time during dredging operations, the suction lines will become clogged and need cleaning. It is a very dangerous practice to position yourself underneath the suction lines while cleaning. If the cable supporting the line were to break, it could be disastrous. Before beginning this task, check with your supervisor on the proper procedure that your company employs. In addition to the cable supporting the suction lines, the dredge itself travels along cables suspended from anchor points in the bank. Any time that cables are being used and have stress placed on them, they can store tremendous energy that can be released, suddenly causing a whipping action on the cable. It is essential to constantly monitor these cables and not to allow the situation to develop. While dredging, it is very easy for the dredge to drift towards the solid bank that may have been undercut. If the dredge were to get too close to the bank when it sloughs off, it could present a hazard. Be certain to maintain the distance recommended by your company while dredging. There are various clays that are mined in Florida. Common clays are mined in small quantities throughout the state for use in manufacture of brick and cement. Overburden and fuller's earth are typically removed with excavators. As with all mining, there are various methods that can be utilized, but let's take a look at the use of excavators. Excavators are similar to drag lines in that they are constantly turning on an axis. Therefore, the swing radius of an excavator must be given attention. Stay out of the swing zone of an operating excavator and do not enter the area without confirmation from the operator that it is safe to do so. Excavators often dig several feet deep. Since the ground has been disturbed and steep banks have been exposed, there's the danger of unstable ground. When working and traveling in these areas, do not advance to within six feet of an edge or a crack that is developed in the ground. Excavator operators have been trained to recognize unstable ground and have been instructed to operate perpendicular to the bank to guard against overturn. Once the clay has been loaded into trucks, it will be carried to the mill for crushing, screening, and drying before it is packaged. The clay will be dumped at the mill possibly under sheds, to protect it from rain. It will be loaded into hoppers by a front-end loader. Again, there will be the hazards associated with conveyor systems at these plants, but one particular hazard exists here that is absent from a crushed stone operation, a dryer. After the fuller's earth has been sized, it must be dried. The temperature in these dryers can be extreme, and precautions must be taken while working or passing through this area. Once the fuller's earth has been processed and sized, it will be packaged for sale as an absorbent, for oil spills or kitty litter. When used for kitty litter, various fragrances and dyes may be added to make the product more appealing. I don't know if the cat cares, but the owners do. Once the products have been packaged, they will be stored and shipped by the use of forklifts. Warehouse areas can be very busy and congested. With so much activity, a pedestrian in this area could be endangered. Forklift operators will constantly be sounding their horn to alert you of their presence. If you are in a designated walk area, be sure to stay within that safe zone. If you must enter the work area, make certain that the operators know of your presence. People seldom appreciate where many of the products that enhance their lives actually come from. The next time your soft drink fizzles just right, thank the miners of Florida. The next time you admire your plush green lawn, thank the miners of Florida. The next time you have a family barbecue on the patio, thank the miners of Florida. The next time your cat walks across the living room with a pleased expression on his face, thank the miners of Florida. The next time you brush your teeth, thank a miner. As they say, if you don't grow it, you mine it. Well, there you have it. Different types of mining found in America. Until our next exciting mine safety training video, work safe.